Total War formula for Thrones Britannia is how research and technology works. This example is taken from Strathcluth, but all the factions will have the same research available to them, as Thrones is set in a very contained period of Viking warfare. You'll notice the traditional divide between civic and military technologies, but now these ideas take time to develop, and Thrones adds an unlock requirement to each technology chain. On the civic tree, the research is divided into agriculture, industry, military support, leadership, trade, and community. The unlocks for each path are actually quite sensible. Before you can research agriculture, you have to build a farm. Uh, industry requires a forge, a garrison, a law court, a market hall, and a monastery. You can also upgrade existing buildings or capture a fully developed one to unlock a path. It's a sensible change that asks players to consider how a technology impacts their society before investing in it. The upgrades themselves are similar to what we've seen in past Total War games and reflect the nation on the rise. From increased farm income to additional supplies for your army, the agriculture chain is all about feeding your society and your troops while industry allows road upgrades and cheaper construction. Dividing out the research into subcategories lets you decide what to focus on in your campaign without requiring unrelated text to slow down your progress. Research can also be used to bring you closer to your victory condition, enable unique buildings, and bestow bonuses to trade, happiness, and even research. It's something we've seen before in previous Total War games, but refined. The military side is a bit more interesting. All units available to a faction are divided into early, middle, and late game, and this separation does a fair job of reflecting the nationalization and professionalization of armies in the period. Each path on the technology tree is unlocked by first recruiting units of that type. 10 sword or axemen, 10 spearmen, 10 ranged infantry, and 10 cavalry, as well as raising generals to their highest level, winning sieges, and defeating armies. As you advance down each path, you'll unlock your middle game units typically heavier armored and more loyal versions of your regular levy troops, as well as your faction's unique units and some corresponding buffs to their abilities. This new system requires you to consider what your army actually needs and think ahead to research into it instead of just having them magically become available with a new building. Can't take that last fortified settlement? Use the siege line to unlock towers and catapults. It reflects the problems encountered in the era and the development of specialized troops like Saxon Huskarls, who came to be depended on as the core of an army, swinging their giant Dane axes left-handed to better attack an enemy's unshielded side. In the bottom right corner of the military technology screen, there are four buttons that express this, unlocked one at a time and only after you complete the last node in its corresponding chain. Want badass archers? Great but be prepared to invest time and money into their research to unlock the most powerful version available. It's a nice change of pace and goes again to show how the campaign in Thrones of Britannia is making logical changes to reflect the era, but also try and keep it fun. But what do you think? Is it streamlining from CA or just cutting content? Thrones of Britannia is on pre-order now, and you can pick it up from a Sega approved retailer for a significant discount from the link in the video description below. If you like the content here today, leave a comment below or just click subscribe. I try to update weekly with videos and historical games and stories. And as always, thanks for watching.